Welcome back to another Mutiny, a talk show where we talk about things, and then we don't talk about things, and then we talk about things for an extended period of time. Today, I'm joined by quite a surprising crew in the fact that I have the rest of the current Season 2, 25 North with me, including the one and only Jason. Say hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hello, everyone. Simon didn't say that. All right. We all lose. Oh, I guess over. I gotta leave yeah. then. See you guys later. <laughs> all right, finally. We're gonna take two steps back. Uh-huh. You know, how's everyone doing? Doing all right. Pretty yeah. good. <laughs> You're reminding me now of just Simon says stuff and uh, thinking about Dropout <laughs> and their, oh. uh, their Sam Says episodes. They're really it, good. It is crazy how uh, how difficult Simon Says can get, even when you are a lot older. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the brain works weird. Sometimes you just want to do things. Just a mm. game of paying attention, and the moment you lose attention, that's it. GG. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. I've said it before, but Dropout's my favorite four ninety nine a month. Um, yeah. I All agree. their content's just generally interesting if you're looking for something for in the background or on the side. And they're independent, so it's nice not feeding a bunch of money into a huge corporation. Yeah. Definitely. It's nice. They're, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. Me oh, uh, yeah, so College Humor, or I think, I think they're the ones... It was rolling. originally College Humor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. did they change their name? Yeah, well, uh, it's a... Hey, it's a they, they hot story. And then they got bought out by a new guy as, like, a partial merger saving under uh, College Humor Dropout. And then he bought out all the College Humor shares, and now it's independent just under Dropout. Yeah. And it, it's, it's a lot of, like, regular programming... Uh, type stuff like there's a few game shows on it there's uh there's game changer where the rules of the game change every single show so all the people kind of have to act on the fly to figure out what the hell's even happening um there's um actually which is a great one if you have a mind like me and you like to know every single little nook and cranny of fantasy media because uh, it's like, we'll give you this blanket statement and you have to find out what's wrong with it <laughs> to get a point. One of like the best examples of it. It's very much so like for nerd TV. It really is. Like one of the best examples that they had for Um Actually is they had a bunch of DMs come on for like that DM fifth, ed- like D&D fifth edition, essentially. Uh, and Matt Mercer was one of them. He came in and was like... <laughs> Y'all are fucking nerds. Proceeds to decimate everyone in this one game where they're like, give them a full story, a full thing of one round of action in combat. And he found like new things that the crew didn't actually account for. Yeah, they like, were. Yeah, uh, no, he's right. <laughs> there were 17 things that the crew had figured out wrong in that round of combat. And Matt Mercer found an 18th thing, which is the fact that pit fiends are not weak to fire damage, <laughs> which was got, which is the only thing that got overlooked in that entire combat. It's cool. It's super cool. This is, yeah. We're just gushing about other shows now. <laughs> I have seen some of those. I just, like usual, did not know what it was called because no, I don't okay. like names. They also have other shows where they'll get people uh, on there just to like have fun. Uh, one of the ones that I like to watch whenever I can is called Dirty Laundry, <laughs> where what they'll basically do is they'll grab people and be like, we're going to make a game out of this, and we'll have, like, drinks. You're going to take a drink if this Dirty Laundry, like, indeed does match to you. And this upcoming season, they have, like, Freddie Wong on there. Or no, not Freddie Wong. Uh, I believe they have some of the people from Dungeons and Daddies on it. Which is very exciting. It's another D and D podcast. Hi, I enjoy podcasts to a criminal degree. Someone save me, please. Oh, I've I've got to watch the small scale ones one of these days. You yeah. said dirty laundry, and it made me think of that Punisher short that Ooh. they did with Thomas Jane. Um, 
this was before the Netflix one. Um, if you haven't, if you haven't seen it, you should look it up. It Just will. look up uh, Thomas Jane, Dirty Laundry. It's like a thirteen-minute <laughs> short. It's amazing. It is really, really good. <laughs> in fact, I'm going to link it in the Excellent. Discord. Yeah. All these people all this know talk. what you're talking about by the time this comes out. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the previous talk about game shows did make me think. If you guys could ever go on to any game show at all, what would it be? Yes. <laughs> you got to pick one. If Do I'm I? going to any game show, I think I could probably do pretty good in Family Feud. Or Price is Right. Oh, I'd be useless in Price is Right. I have such a bad eye for figuring out how much things cost. <laughs> I'm pretty good at it. Um, oh, you know what? Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune I think I could do pretty fucking good in. I've watched enough Wheel of Fortune and Geo Party. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can sign me up for these are a bit of a, a different kind of game show but I think I do pretty well on the Amazing Race or Survivor Ooh. oh Survivor would be fun Survivor would be not, great not Big Brother no I'm no not, I, 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 like, I, want... I like being alive I would love to be a contestant or no actually I would love to be a judge on the Great British Bake Off just so I can get free food <laughs> there you go. On any of those cooking shows would be a sweet judge position. Oh fuck yeah! I feel like uh, if I were to go into one, Jeopardy would probably be the game show that I would do best at because I just have a stockpile of useless trivia knowledge that will eventually go to waste, and that's the one way I could use it. <laughs> uh, so or the other thing is Wipeout. <laughs> Oh my god, you would eat shit at Wipeout, babe. I love I, you, but you would fucking eat shit. But see, that's the, the point. I would a lot get onto fun. the funniest Wipeouts. That's true. <laughs> I, I would do Wipeout too, but I don't expect to walk away from the Wipeout course fully intact. <laughs> you make like the Lego piece like breaking apart sound effect. <laughs> Can I go back to the early 90s and do American Gladiators? Ooh! Ooh. Oh, oh, that's yeah. a good idea. That's fun. I don't think I've ever heard oh, yeah. of that show. What's that one about? What do you mean you've actually no? Never mind. I forgot it too. <laughs> it's me. I don't watch things. <laughs> you never do, except if it's Lord of the Rings or if it's a show I have somehow managed to convince you to watch. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna do you give like, you the do you four like documentaries, version. Jackson. Do I like documentaries? Uh, it depends. Yeah. There is a docu series currently on Netflix called. Muscles and Mayhem. <laughs> it is a behind the scenes look at the creation of American Gladiators. And it is fucking crazy. The, the <laughs> first season Amer of American Gladiators, they did not have a medical staff. The show <laughs> is essentially American Ninja Warrior, except for there's uh, a bunch of people on steroids scattered throughout the course with like pole arms and stuff that you have to fight past <laughs> and a very low safety budget. And like Jason said, especially in the beginning, it got a bit better towards the end, but it is one of those like key, like early 90 things um, that is just wonderful. Oh, I've got to find this. This sounds like a blast to I'm watch. I'm so surprised that you haven't like seen it. See, I know Ninja Warrior. I know Ninja Warrior like crazy. That was that was on weekly uh, when I when I was growing up. <laughs> I think the other one I would love to be on is is um, is it Chopped, where they give oh. you like a mishmash of ingredients and you have to you have to come up with a dish. Dude, that's just There's me cooking those, in the kitchen yeah. normally. I'd exactly. love to be a part of that. There's like Master Chef. I think there's uh, Guy Fieri has like the grocery games. I think. I would love to do that one, actually. Just put me on a cooking show. I would love to just come in and be like, hi, I'm here to cook, and I proceed to make some amazing meals. How long do you think you'd last in Hell's Kitchen? Oh, I'd last a second before I burst into tears from Gordon Ramsay, and I Honest, leave. <laughs> honestly, same. I would crack so fast under that pressure. <laughs> no, I think that if I was in Hell's Kitchen, and if he saw me start crying, be like, 
All right, I'll go easy on you, maybe. I'm just the most like, when I'm going to a kitchen space, I look like the smallest woman ever. <laughs> like a little mouse. <laughs> Do not perceive me, I just wanna cook. I'd be all right. Yeah, you have been through that life, you can fucking live it. You just have to N figure out how to blame it on everyone else so it's not your fault, they'll get yelled at. Yeah, exactly. Now, how would um, Carrie Underwood, your bread lady, do with Gordon Ramsay? She would fucking rule the competition. <laughs> I I know her very well. She would have came in and be like, "Now nah, this is my kitchen out here, honey." She would uh, she would start in Hell's Kitchen, not make it very far in, and then get told by Gordon to do Master Chef instead, and then win. <laughs> yeah. I think that's probably how it would play out. Somehow on only serving bread bowls. Yeah. She knows how to make a real good sourdough bread bowl, man. Every time we talk about bread bowls, I just remember the video of the baker who's just in tears as someone's turning his loaf into a bread bowl. <laughs> I'm familiar with this video. It's so good. It's from The Onion, isn't it? I don't oh, know. Probably. <laughs> probably Seems very. Is. Seems very uh, Onion Beaverton-esque. Yeah. Also, thank I'm... you, Corey, for sending me American Gladiator. I will not forget this gift. <laughs> yeah, if you browse through that, there's full episodes throughout the, the channel. It's perfect. Now, um, and once you watch a handful of episodes, I recommend that you watch a docu-series on Netflix because, yeah, it's, it's shocking. The, the gladiators themselves went they got screwed they got screwed hard by the network dang is yeah it's it's wild but yeah I, I brought up um Carrie Underwood because it's been brought up a few times in our in our server yeah what the hell is Timothy so Timothy <laughs> <laughs> Timothy is my pathetic little meow meow uh but no actually Timothy is an animist that he has officially changed classes from a thaumaturge to an animist he has been an animist for a while but hey it's it's been stated here on the podcast I could have sworn we've said it too on the show ah uh, maybe it might have been in passing it might have been a garbled it, mess might have details. <laughs> Add tomato, tomato. <laughs> you didn't archetype, yeah. right? So you still have some of your thaumaturginess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so Timothy <coughs> retained the thaumaturge dedication mm -hmm. to, um, which is why you still see the implement and you still see glimpse vulnerability. But um, officially, <laughs> Timothy is an animist. And at this point in time, Timothy has three apparitions. Yeah. So it's really cool. So we are using the playtest rules. And if Timothy's still around, we will use the official rules when they come out next summer. My, my dog. You mean uh, when Timothy's still around? Because he's still going to be getting around. That boy ain't dying. Now. I'm not letting that happen. I built Volmo to last, and next thing you know, they got swallowed by a slime, and it was all over. Nah, man. Some, some things you just can't fight. Nah, I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. I'm Volmo not had let like a, a really good, really good AC, like had a shield, and like used it and stuff. Ah, Could but you heal yourself. Yeah. Yeah. For free, didn't have to charge <laughs> a penny to heal myself. That's not bad, actually. You didn't yeah. have to make offerings afterwards, like, to your god? No. It's, it's just perk of the job. The, yeah, plus, you got, you're, the, the rate that I charge everybody else kind of covers my own healing, generally, in, in Abadar's <laughs> eyes, so... Yeah, I have to ask. Um, so, you've played both a Thaumaturge and an Animus, both which are completely brand new, from scratch classes um, that haven't ever had an equivalent previously. There was no Thaumaturge in Pathfinder 1, and there was no Thaumaturge prior to that I know of mm -hmm. in TTRPGs, and same thing with Animist. Yeah. Completely from scratch, brand new classes. Um, yeah, what did you think about those? Like, 
playing them. I really liked Thaumaturge. It was very fun, but I have gotten so like so much joy out of playing the Animist just because it fits perfectly with Timothy before we even, you know, like this class even came to be. Uh, like Timothy has a lot of stuff going on with him in his backstory. And it like when we saw or rather when Jason saw this, he came to me and was like, Lunar, check this shit out. And I audibly gasped when I first saw this thing. And I said, I want that. I want Timothy to be that, please. Can I have that, please? And he said, okay. Uh, yeah. But I, I really like, both classes are amazing. Do not get me wrong. It is, I'm like still trying to catch myself being like, oh yeah, as a thaumaturge, I would have had this, but I don't have that. Instead, I've got like <laughs> even more weak nerd arms. Uh, but <laughs> I I really do enjoy uh, the Animist a lot. It's been fun, and I I can't wait for people to see uh, the other the other ones that I have planned for uh, Animist stuff that I have. Because yeah, yeah. there are more spirits that can fucking come up. Absolutely. Honest, God, I might keep the three that we have because they're a little cool. Yeah, because if, if you're not familiar with the Animist, they can choose which apparitions they that joins them for each day. Mm -hmm. And that gives them different cantrips, different spells, and different skills um, every day. So depending on... You know, hey, we're going to go into the wilds here. You might want to choose an apparition that gives you like a bonus to survival. Or, yeah. hey, we're, this is a, this is, we're going to be spending the day in the city. Well, you might want to give you, choose an apparition that's going to give you a bonus to society. So, um, there's a, there's like a balance to it. So we might see different apparitions as the adventure goes on that gives different bonuses. Yep. And yeah, it's, pretty cool like there's a water apparition there's a there's a volcano apparition that's fire based there um, is it, one apparition that will always stick around unless stated otherwise dark stars gotta still be there no matter what and that's something that i i have purposely done for myself as like kind of a handicap mm -hmm. for like story reasons because i'm like timothy's technically cursed with this thing so I, I will only limit myself for sure, no matter what, that, that will always be there. But the other two are always got to be Miss Carrie Underwood and a third apparition that you have not gotten the name of yet. Yeah, and we've I, um, mechanically built that in as that apparition always has to be selected. Mm -hmm. And the haunted background, which is your background. Yep. And you, in case you didn't figure it out, hi, I'm haunted. <laughs> I'm so curious where the Dark Star stuff is going to go. Just because, like, I already have... Because Timothy is playing in a campaign that I run myself privately. Um, and I already have plans on what the Dark Star is and everything that goes along with that. So I'm, I'm very curious to see what, what Jason's going to do with that concept. <laughs> in Jackson's campaign, I'm technically a bad guy, but not really. You're a puppet of a bad guy. Let's let's say that much, because that's probably the most accurate that Tim I can do. Timothy has big puppet spoilers. energy. He's got big puppet energy. Plus, I've technically had it referred to by the Dark Star as his puppet whenever he's talking about Timothy. Yeah. Well, and at this point, you know, we've got close to 25 hours, I would estimate, of game time with you guys in second edition. Uh, oh, how are, yeah, how wow. are you two? How are you two feeling about the system now? I think uh, it's a little fun. bit more comfortable. Got the the three action economy kind of sorted out. I, I think love it's it. Neat. <laughs> I still need to learn conditions. Like like uh, with with a recent episode, we just got diseases, and so we, I was like, onset was now a thing that I have to think about. I'm like, okay, I need to rebrush on these mechanics because there's a lot. I, and, I think because I, I you am are, real quick. You are spot on, Corey, because we have 28 hours, 54 minutes and 54 seconds in season two. Damn. Damn. Timothy's been alive for a while. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Yeah. 
But hey, uh, I think you're impressed. Imagine how I feel. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We're 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 getting close to having Zaba be the longest lasting one. <laughs> it's gonna happen, man. I'm not letting anybody in our oh, party die. You better knock out wood then. <laughs> I don't have wood More around in my me. Bedroom. Here, hold on. Glass I have like a wooden concrete. frame. Uh, the closet door behind you, not wood? Yeah, it's like a cheap fiber board of some sort. <laughs> nah, fair. But, uh, I'll let come to me. One. Yeah, going going through and learning Pathfinder has been very interesting for me, too, because I've, like, I play every week as Vesuviac, and then I also GM. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. okay, there's a lot of rules I have to get memorized. <laughs> what about you, Corey? Um, how are you enjoying the Barbarian? I know you've chosen to be selective about your raging, but... Yeah, uh, I, I'm liking Zaba. I I often like to joke that Zaba's a fighter who occasionally gets a little bit angry and loses his cool because I'm definitely playing a more like a fighter, I would argue, just without some of the cool little bonuses you get there. But I think that's kind of what the route of a barbarian is, is a fighter that at times loses control and uh, just really just goes the extra mile. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying Zaba. Uh, he's my first martial character I've ever played. Um, it's nice not having to worry about spells. Um, starting to get more familiar with some of the, the more like maneuver based things is interesting. Um, the reposition mechanic recently came up here and, uh, I'm a big fan of that one now that I'm familiar with it. So that's going to see a lot of use in the next little while. Yeah, yeah. I think I think um, you've been playing Zaba really well. The and being selective about the raging. Yeah, um, there's uh, it, certain conditions to rage, and maybe things will shift, and you will be uh, in less of a, a good guy place of mind down the road, and that rage will come a little bit easier. We'll see what yeah, happens. We'll see. He's keeping himself pretty in check at this point, but yeah. you know he is a he is a Hezru team, and he's got some stuff going on there. Yeah. And what about you, Rachel? Your your rogue. I know you you like rogues, and you've played rogues quite a bit. Yeah. But as I mean... as this rogue has leveled up, um, how are you enjoying the ro- the this rogue? I like this rogue. This is currently my only rogue. I had another rogue and they retrained to be something else. Um, So it's nice to, I mean, rogue's my default. That's what I played very first TTRPG ever. So it's always comfortable and easy to get into that mindset. But still has got things going on not related to being a rogue that are fun. I love Syl. I really like our party a lot. It's a lot of fun. Well, and I wonder how Syl feels about her companions for this second portion of the journey compared to leaving for the first part of her journey. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Syl's made different connections. Like, the first group were all relatively good. (laughs) <laughs> the second group all have questionable uh, motivations, which make it interesting. Uh, but of course, Sill's in a different place as well, being, you know, memories and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty sure Vesuviac's been the only guy who's been straight up and upfront about him and who he is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but Vesuviac's also like the weirdest motivation because he's like, I want to help people, but also I hate people and I'm being forced to help people. So that's worrying. Uh. <laughs> Timothy's just a regular guy. I don't know what you're talking about. Just a regular human, dude. <laughs> just a yeah. little guy. Your honor, he's yeah. just my sad old man. <laughs> just a little guy with three other guys living in his head. <laughs> You know, you say he's an old man, but i he's my age. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. 
<laughs> it's also hanging out with like two creatures that are hundreds of years old, right? Like Zaba right. and Vesuviac yeah. are Yeah, Zaba's ancient. timeless. Right. <laughs> and yet his beauty knows no bounds. Uh <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, speaking of Vesuviac, how how um have you played a cleric before, Jackson? Uh I have GM'd a cleric, but I've not played a cleric. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you don't really have a basis for comparison, but um how are you enjoying playing a cleric? It's a lot of fun. I actually really like how flexible the class is. Cause there were a lot of there'll be a lot of parts in combat where it's like, okay, do I need to focus on being Zaba's pocket healer? Do I need to be uh, focusing on like buffs and debuffs right now? Are we in a good enough like is everybody else in a good enough spot where I can start slinging my fire rays and things like that? I, I love just the the like flow chart of decision making stuff that I have to go through and double check before I go through and do certain actions. I, I, I just like how how versatile uh, the class is. It's not a one trick pony at all. <laughs> well, and I was I was uh, fairly verbal about being on the fence with two E for the first while when it came out, and something I really like is the way that they've streamlined just clerics healing in general with the heal spell. There's no having to carry, you know, heal, mass heal wounds, you know, a ranged heal, a, a, up close heal. It's you just have heal and no matter how many actions you have, as long as you have that spell prepared, you can help somebody out. Uh, and that's much nicer than having to carry three or four different heal slots um, of various kinds in your your spell book. Oh, yeah. Which adds to that versatility for sure. And and they just give you the font, which is like, hey, here, here, take X number of heal spells. You just get these. Hey, here's just a bunch of heal spells that you just get for free. Oh, yeah. I I, I definitely like that. The, the, the streamlining of the healing is so much, so, so nice. Because, like, my, my basis before Pathfinder 2E is D&D 5E. And, yeah, that was... That's the biggest pain point I have with 5e. It's like, all right, I've got cure wounds for my up close. I got my bonus action healing word for far away, but that's basically only useful to like heal someone from a boo boo. Uh, I got prayer of healing. Cool. Excellent. When's this coming into play? It's a third level spell. <laughs> so it's like, okay. <laughs> the, uh, that you can only use outside of combat. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, and then Somebody... you got your mass cure wounds. Yeah, so that's five slots out of what? Let's say you're level 10. That's five out of your what, 12 spell slots. That's a lot to be carrying. Cuts down on a lot of versatility. Oh, yeah. And even with like the benefit of 5e not being restricted by the rules of fancy and casting, it, it still is like you only have four first level spell slots at maximum. So you burn for your four cure wounds and you either have to sacrifice damage or other important support stuff for that or just not heal <laughs> like the uh the cleric that i mentioned that i've gm'd uh they heal after the battle they do not heal during the battle <laughs> they are insane now, are they doing um, enough damage to mitigate their lack they are the of healing? highest damage dealing they are the right highest now. damage dealer it's that, the same that does game. sound like a 5e cleric yeah it, it's the same game that i am a player in and i just am like sitting there i'll be like Cool, so Timothy's gonna get ready to do a thing. Never fucking mind, the monster is dead. Holy shit, the cleric just went dummy on this thing. Great. Like spirit guardians. I, I love being uh, I love being an alchemist. That's what Timothy is in our homebrew uh, homebrew game. Yeah, he's uh, an artificer. artificer. Artifice, that's the one, thank you, not alchemist. Yeah. I heard Corey mention alchemist once in the game and I've been ruined. Um, yeah, I, I, play, I play an alchemist that I've been playing so, for like three, four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with other systems and, and even previous versions of Pathfinder, one of the biggest one of the biggest pain points was being relegated to the healer. People were just saying it's it's just kind of boring, you're just a heal bot. It's all you're yeah. doing is you're just a heal bot. But one of the things that I love the most about se about second edition Pathfinder is they made playing a support fun yes like even if i'm not dealing any damage 
buffing and debuffing and healing are actually legitimately fun to do. Like, well, and... I, I feel impactful debuffing something and buffing some, buffing my allies. Knowing that that bonus made a difference and because, hey, that plus one made you crit and deal double damage, mm -hmm. that is huge because I gave you a plus one or because I lowered that AC by one. You know, just knowing that... A, that alone is such a big boost to being to being a, a support character. It just it, it makes the world a difference. We well, think and I think. That. Sorry, oh, go, go ahead. ahead, Jackson. Oh, okay. Uh, we we've even had some of those moments in in the podcast itself where I'll I'll throw out a, a quick lay on hands, which you know the healing is the main goal of that, but it has that armor class buff as as a secondary effect, and that has straight up helped out in so many cases. <laughs> yeah. Well, and as a cleric, it feels good to feel useful, but I also really love how you don't have to be a cleric a cleric to be a really good healer anymore like through the the combat medicine and some of the feats and skills you can take you can be a fighter or rogue who just happens to be an excellent healer as well or an um, investigator that's my or favorite an investigator healer. yeah yeah um, like, an investigator yeah like you get there's a lot of a lot of versatility there just based on what feats and skills and ancestries and that kind of stuff you take too where you're not locked into being that divine font you can just be a, essentially a surgeon yeah well and yeah. it's nice so that when your healer goes down hopefully someone else is at least trained in medicine so you're not just <laughs> shit out of luck yeah. the uh the the healer thing with the uh, investigator reminded me of the the RuneScape game I'm GMing right now with Pathfinder. Oh, we have yeah. an alchemist and an investigator that are basically tag team healers because one of them just has medicine proficiency and the alchemist has a feat that makes them be able to do medicine checks using their crafting. And nice. it's so yeah. good. <laughs> yep. Well, forensic investigators got the ability to do battle medicine once every hour instead of once every day which is a huge game changer <sighs> if you're going non-magical healing yeah That's and cool. druids can heal using nature yeah i'm curious to see what a druid plays like and uh, good berries Dru druids, druid healers are amazing. good because they can get good berries druids are awesome which are, druids are my favorite class hey, I, I grab a handful of berries and I imbue them with primal energy and they'll just flip you a berry and it heals for like 1d6 plus however many. It's been a while, but yeah, and then it levels with you. Yeah, oh, that's so, hey, so good. Here, just eat just eat a berry. And it's like, okay. And it's, it's the equivalent of a potion. And a full meal. So you also mm. don't have to worry about becoming <laughs> a hungered. Yep. That's really. Have any of you played in wow. games where you worry about hunger rations? No. What the Elegant? hell? No. I. I did. Well, once. hey, you know, yeah. you, you guys, you guys might get. Um, oh okay. yeah, hungry here. What's that called? What's that called when you get um, left Maroon. alone on an island? Maroon. Marooned on an island. Yeah, it and wasn't me. It was have, that might come up. Who knows? I hope not. I don't if, think so. Uh, if Kalupi does that to us, uh, we will have chicken for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Cooked by Vesuviac. Yeah, some of us can swim after that ship. Yeah. Uh, There's no way that Kalupi's going to get Zaba off that boat without Sil telling him that it's what we're doing. <laughs> and I don't think Sil's going to give up the boat to Kalupi, so... No. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. That might be the tipping point, then Sil can finally... Let Saba kill someone important. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not important. Someone with a title. You know. Oh, he does love killing people with titles. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Their I was blood's say, extra like, rich. Timothy I... did help out with like making sure he wouldn't like, you know, like cause or he wouldn't get killed, so like maybe you should listen to me. <laughs> does the Bolton count as a title? Otherwise I'm scared. <laughs> it, yeah. As far as Zaba's considered, I it's probably borderline. but You've been keeping him alive at 
generally uh, an arm's length, so he's all right with you at this point. No real beef there. He's nice. uh, a little insight, though. He's not so sure about Timothy and all these multiple personalities. He's uh, of the belief that it may be a liability, and if it appears to be of risk to sell on a regular basis, he may have to take action. Yeah. Um, is something he has thought about, so... Timothy might have to watch out for a frog in the night. Oh, that sounds about right. <laughs> another very Tuesday. Suspicious. Why yeah, that's another Tuesday for Timothy. Alive, by the way. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we were thinking about it the other day. It's, oh. I've got a lot of theories now. About? Just just in general? Oh, oh about why Zaba wants to keep Soul alive. Oh. Why wouldn't it's you? Worrying. You employed him. No, there's gotta be something else. No, the there's did. no fucking way. There's more shit. He gave to him it. a shot. You know, he was in shackles. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got him out of chains. He hates that stuff. He's gonna use your blood for like a ritual sacrifice or some bullshit. Hey, yeah. you know he's a good guy. That's what he says, but in actuality, maybe he's not. <gasps> oh my gosh. Jason can back it up. He's a good guy, right? I'll neither confirm convincing. nor deny. <laughs> yeah, Jason just stays silent. <laughs> Shrugged, yeah. Yeah. Neither <laughs> confirm nor deny. If uh, this was an audio, uh, like as a, a visual medium, we would have had press X to doubt. <laughs> <Show them. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and like, I've been enjoying Zaba, and you guys are all enjoying uh, what you're at, but um, Jason, you've been running a lot of games. How do you normally handle things like class changes? Yeah. Um, mid game, especially if it's not during a period of downtime. Like, is there a technique you'd like to go with? Is it just kind of hit them on the head and they wake up as somebody new? <laughs> so, <laughs> we're trying yeah, to cross the border, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, for me, I try not to be so much of a stickler when it comes to to that, just because I'm. I also play and. I know that when something new comes out, I like to play with a new shiny thing. You know, <laughs> I'm a player. Yeah, you're in your third character in our game already. It's only yeah, a I mean, year old. Yeah, Rachel Rachel GMs for me, and she knows this. Like, I like the new and shiny thing. I, I want to test it out. I like to play it. I want to yeah. check it out. So I try not to be too much of a stickler about it. And especially when new books come out that expand on or allow for different ideas that weren't available previously. So like um, different low level cleric feats that Jackson did not was not privy to earlier on when we built uh, Vesuviac that just would fit. You know, I will I'll let him go ahead and be like, hey, yeah, you know what? You spent you had a couple of you had a couple of days on the ship. Yeah, you can retrain that. That's not a big deal. Yeah. And or for um and it's, it's for like Timothy, I knew that Lunar wanted to change to an animist. Mm -hmm. And it was something that we had planned and it was something that we were looking at and and just trying to find the right moment. So yeah. just, so we talked about it. And we're like, okay, hey, there's going to be a moment coming up in about like five or six episodes that would just be perfect for it. Yeah. You know, we are going to face X and this works well into uh, Timothy's backstory. And it can be kind of a moment where, hey, this unlocked a whole thing that was really dormant down inside of Timothy. And that will explain why the sudden class change. Yeah, it was. And so for a major change like that, I think we, I think it makes sense to kind of weave it into a story. Um, much like we did for, for um, Timothy. Yeah. I know in the Abomination Vaults game we're playing, mm -hmm. I had met with Sarah and She's doing a class change for her character just because, um, again, it was a big, there's a big moment that happened 
and her character was a champion of Ioma Day. And it's just like, you know what? I don't think she can be a champion anymore just because of what happened. Really, really pissed her off. And I and I don't think it would make sense for her to be a paladin anymore because now she's going on a campaign of revenge. Is it because I killed her character with filth fever? <laughs> well, um, yeah, she lost her best friend. So we are completely Oof. retooling that character to be a fighter instead of a okay, champion. Diseases are nothing to scoff at. Yeah. What is? Yeah, what she is just filth, died. What does filth fever do? I need to know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna find out soon. <laughs> Man, I'm looking pretty pretty here with me not having any disease yet. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. It's okay. I'm a doctor. <laughs> so it's just like again that's a that's a story point mm-hmm. where it makes sense for the character to make that class change um and and again you know some gms might be a bit more sticklers about it and like no but i'm i'm fairly easy going gm i'm not going to stop somebody from having fun and doing what they want to do with that character the other thing that and not, not to, not to oh. say that you know other GMs who don't want to do it are blocking fun you know I didn't mean it in that sense it's just it's not my style every game's different yeah I get that it was a lot of fun when we were coming up with it too Jason for like the moment when Timothy would become an animist because I told you that Timothy would try to take a fatal hit for somebody and then it was brought up like, oh, he would take a fatal hit from Vesuviac, I think. Because he thinks it's the most probable thing. And for one, for the healer to be targeted. But also he knows that that healer can help heal Zaba. So if Timothy were to have died, he knows at least someone can help heal up other people in the party. And that that's where Timothy was at. So that's why uh, Timothy jumped in to save uh, Vesuviac. And I, as Zaba, feel really good hearing all Sorry, these people Zaba. talk about how I'm the key figure to keep healed and alive. You know, Timothy <laughs> can die because at least Vesuviac will be able to keep Zaba in the fight. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what I like to hear is, you know, uh, Zaba's essentially got two pocket healers. One who's yeah. willing to take a bullet and another one who's uh, capable of fully healing. Yeah. Give me a minute, I can heal. <laughs> yeah, L- L- uh, Luder and I were talking about this uh, a few <laughs> times after this episode aired, where uh, it was during the hag fight, where our party ended up being split, so Zob were fighting one hag, and Vesuviac and Tim were fighting the other. My entire mindset during that part of the battle was keep Tim and myself alive until Zaba could kill his hag. <laughs> yeah. And then when I revealed my like little hat trick of like, surprise, I can heal now. You're like, oh, thank God. It was like a giant load of weight off my back. I'm like, oh, thank God. It's not the only healer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's different why it- versions of this party had multiple people able to do like the combat medicine and that kind of stuff, but <laughs> not so much anymore. Nope. Whoops. Whoa. But yeah, uh, so the same question for the you other GMs. I know every e- each one of you GMs mm-hmm. um, different games. How do how do you handle the whole player wants to change classes situation? I mean, you already addressed mine since I'm I'm the GM for the Sarah game you were just talking about. Uh, <laughs> I also don't care. Uh, honestly, I am the kind of GM that if my players are, as a collective, going to have more fun ignoring rules or doing different rules, I don't care. Um, that's, you know, so... If they want to have it be a big story moment, that's cool. If they're just like, I hate this feat or I hate this class, I don't want to do it anymore, that's fine too. It Mm -hmm. doesn't matter to me unless it's, you know, getting in the way of someone else who's really story driven or something. But yeah. It's fair. I uh, 
can't say it's ever been an issue for myself or come up in one of my games is a better way of putting it. Either I'm playing running super high lethality games where you come in playing a character named Bob because you expect to be playing Bob the Seventh by the end of the night, or <laughs> you're playing games where characters survive for extended periods of time and uh, the guys playing them are happy with who they are because it's been kind of a goofy, weird game the whole time anyways. I mean, for me myself, I really just like yes ending my players with uh, like, whenever I DM games, I am the most like, ah, so we're gonna take this as a theater class, and now I am yes anding your bits, because it's just fun to play it that way. So if, like, halfway through the D&D campaign, if someone comes to me and is like, hey, can I actually be, like, this class instead? I'm like, cool, awesome. I have, um, and at that moment in time, I'll immediately come up with a reason why they're that way now instead. Completely weave my story around it. Make it like an important moment. And I you like hit your doing head that. And woke up different. Yeah. Or what is it? Uh, you during this fight, uh, an ancient god has spoken to you and said, "I, right, you new class now. Congratulations. All right, goodbye, sucker." And then leaves. Yeah, we. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure we have one player in an old game that you ran where they changed their class three times throughout the duration of the campaign. Yes, they did. Uh, which I allowed because I was like, you know what? Well, I want to have fun with this and I don't want to stop you from going with it. And they had fun with each character, each variations of that character. Uh, but then they retired that character. I'm like, good. It, they needed to retire. <laughs> was there a reason they changed the class three times instead of making new characters? Uh, they liked that character. They just didn't like the class. So like, they liked the story just around the character. Just indecisiveness. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. pure indecisiveness. Yeah. yeah. I've, uh, I have not had anybody come up to me and like, hey, I want to change my class in mm-hmm. a campaign. <laughs> the only time someone's ever approached me like that is like, hey, I'm not feeling my character. What can we do about this? Or like, I want to roll a new character. I'm like, okay. And since that, the goal of that campaign was to drive home how deadly the environment and the enemies were yeah we, we came up with an excuse of like okay we're going to kill your previous character and then next session we're going to bring in your new character and then they were satisfied with that from that point forward but like yeah. with the game that i run with lunar and uh it, with the 5e game if like if lunar came up to me and said hey i don't want to be an artificer anymore i want to be a paladin i'd probably ask a question of like how do we expect to do that or how do we expect to have that to happen but it wouldn't be a no it would be like okay i hear you i definitely want to see how this goes through i just kind of want to know how you think this is going to go just so i can understand like the process that we need to get here to go from point a where we are to point b where you want to be Hey, babe, if I want to change my character, I'll let you know, and I'll have an exact reason, bullshit way of how Timothy would have changed his class in that campaign. But I also honestly like playing uh, my Artemis, uh, Artificer God. Of course. Just throwing out an example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've never played the same, well, a little exception, but almost never played the same character in two different campaigns. What makes it Timothy if it's a different class and a different GM helping with the backstory? Just because it's a different class and different GM doesn't mean it's still the same character's backstory. Okay. Uh, backstory, I, personality, similarities. Exactly. Okay. I am a very backstory, personality-centric person. It's just I will try to fit. I will try to find what best fits uh, the character for like classes that are available. Like the best example of it is when I was a guest for the Roaring Trainers. I had my character, Irene Santos. She was one of my first actual D&D characters I got to play with like a bunch of people. And before she was a bard. Bringing her over into a completely different campaign was a different story because I was able to, I could not be a bard obviously, but I wanted to be something that felt like Irene. And so I'm able to work that out so long as I keep my backstory, or not the 100% the same backstory, but as so long as I'm able to keep that personality of that character, that's what matters the most to me. Sure. 
I can kinda, personality. I can kind of view it like a like a multiverse thing, like a spider verse, exactly. where it's like there are a billion Peter Parkers, but each Peter Parker is different in some certain way. Exactly, so it's like that situation. Yeah, Jackson's got it. He he knows me too well. He knows how to derap my brain. It it. It helps, too, that I love multiverse theory. <laughs> yeah, same. I'm a sucker for it. Uh, so I am kind of curious. Is there any multi-class combo that you guys like to go for when multi-classing is available? I've done Cleric Thief several times. Cleric yeah, thief. you did that in our first edition game. I did that in that. I did it in one of the run attempted runs of uh, Giants back in first at D&D. Yeah. I don't remember if I've actually ever multiclassed. I... Not in any of my games, you haven't. No, I've never multiclassed in any game. I have played a lot of first edition Pathfinder, which allowed you to get pretty wild with multiclass as you went on. Um, and have played as, as, as far as a three way multiclass. Uh, and that was a fighter gunslinger witch <gasps> that essentially I had it all comboed out so that at like level 7 they had 7 attacks per turn and ghost touch and sentient weapons and uh, had trench fighting so they got all sorts of crazy bonuses from hiding and like dropping prone um, so nice. I, I like a good multi-class but I like a multi-class that you build out to a certain level and start playing Less so than uh, I've been playing this character up to level seven as an alchemist, and now they're also a wizard at the same time. Is less so my style of play, but um, yeah, you can get wild with multi class sometimes, depending what you're looking for. So I I like playing clerics. Cleric is my favorite class, always has been. <laughs> it was the first class I played. Much like Rachel with rogues, it's the first class I played. And so it's kind of the one I fell in love with. So I've done Cleric uh, Paladin, or Champion, um, Cleric Monk. I think those are the only two that I've done in the past. Um, Yeah, that's just just what I do. Cleric Monk and Cleric Champion, or Slash Paladin. Um, I like the Divine classes. That's that's me. That's what I do. (laughs) I, I get it. They're fun. Let's see, I don't. I don't think I've multi-classed in a campaign either, outside of uh, like Baldur's Gate. But that's partially because Baldur's Gate's so easy to like test things. You just in- instantly get into combat in a game, whereas you know, with with tabletop, you kind of have to get people, get a session. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a little trial here. Yeah, I guess you could kind of run mock combats, but even then, that only goes so far. Uh, but I, I feel like I want to find a multi-class that works well in 5th edition. I'm sure it also exists in Pathfinder's 2nd edition, which is just the, uh, I think the term is Gish, like a spell sword. Someone who's equally good at fighting with a sword and casting spells. Make us. Magus, Magus, yeah, I think that's the one. That that's yeah. definitely been on my list for sure. But uh, it exists I'm, within Pathfinder. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. one class. Whereas with Five E, like there, I, I feel like you can only get that to its full extent if you do multi class. Because I don't think Eldritch Knight has that magic offensive capability. Um, Hexblade Warlock might be the closest. Now that I'm thinking about it. Well, and that's oh, why yeah. you see so many of them in 5e. Is because it gives you the option to use a sword and then the strongest spell. Eldritch Blast. Your boy Kendall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kendall's. That's who it is. <sighs> yeah. I have a Hexploid Warlock named Kendall who's been one of my favorite characters I've ever created. Nice. Sad boy and a vampire. sword mage in 4th ed who is... Those are the fighter plus magic, who is all centered around making enemies stay next to her. It was a very fun character. Yeah, there's so much you can do, right? The sky's yeah. the limit. True and real. True and real. 
It's the oh, facts. Yeah. It's the facts. Well, and you know, we're, uh, we're in there. You know, we're out there doing adventures, playing games, experiencing yes. characters in new ways. Um, and yeah, it's good. So like, you guys have been playing for a little while now, uh, targeted at Jackson and Lunar. The other two I know are locked in, they're addicts like myself, but do you guys see yourself sticking with 2 Wii uh, in the future? You've got another game going of it already, Jackson, so I have a feeling you're you're pretty well hooked. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like for myself, I really like to explore every kind of uh, system because I think it's really interesting to just to go through all of them. I like being well versed in as many as I can, so that way I can run them good uh, for others that would like to get their hands on them. That's that's my thing. So maybe stick Pathfinder 2E might be in my future, especially if I'm going to be in any of Jackson's games. I know that for a fact. Uh, <laughs> because he has gotten rather tired of 5e. But I still do have uh, a little... I do still have love for 5e because that was the first system I got to play for TTRPGs. And, like, I can't let that love go, you know? Plus, I for it. me, for 5e, I feel like just, like, that one, since I'm the most familiar with, I can really have fun with, like, homebrew stuff for it. That's That's just my thought. I the way see. I I see it is 5e is good for people that don't know what they're doing as a quick pickup session, mm -hmm. but it's not what I want to play in a long form anymore. Like, not week after week. Um, not personally, at least. It's very good for that pick-up-and-go kind of action, but 2e has gotten very close in ease of character creation and all that now, so... Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah! So what, what I want to see from you, Lunar, is I want to see you do more Powered by the Apocalypse stuff. Because I think I think that system and like those rule sets work with your GMing style really well. So Much more so, I would agree. I am very excited, because I can talk about this one. I am going to be getting my hands on a TTRPG that got made using the Powered by the Apocalypse system. Uh, and it is from the creators of a, like, kind of like an internet, like, creepypasta called the Mystery Flesh Pit. I'm getting my hands on that because I bought the physical version of it. When I get it, I plan on running you guys through it and you're not going to escape my wrath. I'm going to make you go through a horror one shot and you're going to pee your pants. That's my goal. <laughs> oh, no. I've abandoned the Mystery Flesh Pit before. Yeah, cults. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Jackson knows. I, uh, I loved that arc of that campaign because people were not ready for what I was going to throw them. Because how I brought them in was they originally were in fantasy, fantasy ass land, walked through a forest. They ended up in Waco, Texas. Odessa. Uh, Odessa, Texas. Sorry. <laughs> and they got to experience for the first time ever, like a Chili's 2, an IMAX, and all this stuff. And people believed that they were all in cosplay because it was the same week a cosplay convention was in town. So no one raised any questions. But then they start finding about like these accidents that happen. They go into the mystery flesh pit. And then it's a, basically a, a death murder game where if they don't get out in three days time, uh, their entire planet goes goodbye. Hmm. It was very fun. I love doing that. And it, it was just fun being able to play creepy monsters, make creepy noises and just do so many like horror movie tropes with my own take on them. Like, I had someone's head explode to reveal, like, a monster and parasite underneath it. Yeah, that was freaky. <laughs> mm. It, like, split open kind of like a Resident Evil uh, villain. Or, um, or, uh, um, the, in The Last of Us. Yeah, like a clicker. Yeah, I fought a bunch of clickers in Jerusalem today. Damn, In clickers. my Strange Aeons game, so. Ooh. Yeah, no, uh, I need to, I need Alex to Alex does good guys. clicker noises. I need to run you guys through an actual horror, uh, like, one-shot thing for you guys. When I get my hands on the uh, Mystery Let's Flesh Pit it. stuff, y'all are gonna suffer. <laughs> uh, 
I've also got the RuneScape tabletop coming in too, so we'll see if we want to do oh. anything with that when it comes in. Nice! I know for sure yeah, our group's going to probably do something. There's a lot of potential for um, some, like, backer one-shots. And, yeah! Because I'm sure, I, I guarantee you, there are some backers that would love to probably get in on a RuneScape second edition, Pathfinder 2nd Edition one-shot run by Jackson. Mm-hmm. I guarantee oh. it. There's uh they made their own system. Jagex teamed up with uh with the company and there's now like a standalone RuneScape tabletop that they're shipping out. Uh I bought that. I still can gear things to second edition. If you want to know anything about RuneScape at all, like just straight up, I'm in the Discord, just at me, and I will give you an answer <laughs> to anything RuneScape related. <laughs> it's your hyperfixation. Yeah. Did you get did you and get I, a red hat yet? And I can guarantee you Not that there yet. that there's folks that would Love to play in a PBTA game run by uh, Lunar. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make yeah. them pee their pants. I'm going to make people. <laughs> I'm gonna. Scared. I'm gonna wear some adult diapers. Then. Good. <laughs> Prepare yourself. I mean, I mean, uh, Lunar I... already called me ancient, so I'm not just, I'm just <laughs> li- live yeah, the, the, live man. that life. I have just such issues with seeing <laughs> Lunar running anything that. I could take as scary. I'm sorry, Lunar. You just don't come across as that type to me. Corey, you are <laughs> waging a war that you cannot win. <laughs> oh, I I have been through the literal fire. I feel pretty confident Hi, in this Corey, one. Get, get so close right now. Your ass is fucking grass, my man. I'm going to make you wish you were never born. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> All right, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Now it is my goal. Now it is my goal to get you in a one shot with a bunch of people. And my goal is to scare the ever loving shit out of you. Or at the very least, give you a good horror experience. I wish you luck. I don't my need seventh, luck. My, my seventh birthday was Pet Cemetery themed. I've been in this game for a long time. A challenge, finally. Oh, man, I was going to say, it's Litter Better Match. So oh, bad. No. <laughs> No, because I have something I can do for Corey. I'm pretty. I I'm t- already I'm pretty have scared. it in my head. I'm pretty tough to scare too, but we'll see. All right, Jason, listen, I'm, I'm gonna not, scare I'm the not, shit out of you. No, I'm you're not, you're next to my list. I'm not. Everyone I'm not gonna talk scared. myself up. I'm just. <laughs> I am. Um, no shame. But, but before we go, because um, we are over an hour already. Oh wow. Damn. I know. Guys, I know. Talking about stuff. Um, and, and nothing. We. You did mention movie horror tropes, um, which did bring up, made me think about the, the R adventure, which yes. is a pirate adventure. Yar. Um, Yar. And so this is, this will be kind of a, um, a question directed at two different groups. So one to Lunar and Jackson and one to Corey and Rachel, because Corey and Rachel have been it since the, through, since the beginning. And Lunar and Jackson, you two have only been it, been in the show since book, the start of book two. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are playing into pirate adventure, and basically any pirate trope that you can think of um, is in this adventure. And there's going to be a lot more. So if you haven't seen one yet, just hold on to your horses because we, we are not even at the halfway point in the adventure. Here. So. Um, w- which ones are some of your favorites and have we experienced those yet on the show and yeah and, and, and talk about that and mm. tell me and if we haven't w- what is it like if you tell me what your favorite is and um, and I can I'll double check to make sure we that's in the adventure I, 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 I guarantee couple, you it is, but if it's not... I have a couple that I've always been a fan of. Uh, the first of which we witnessed very early on with the Iron Eels, and that's uh, Pirates with Eye Patches. It's, uh... What's happening? Let's make you lose so many eyes, but stay alive. Like, that's crazy. It's just like peg legs. They weren't that common. Uh, so <laughs> I was going to kick out of that. But my other one, I'm not sure if we've seen it yet, is the Pirate with, like, 12 Pistols. Um, I want to be that. Like, I want to be that. <laughs> yeah, that that always cracks me up. Where it's just like, okay, 
It was a, a way the pirates showed like intimidation and power was the number of pistols they carried. That's why Blackbird was famous for carrying, I believe it was six or eight on his vest, uh, like pointed inwards. And it was nice because then you didn't have to reload. You could just fire and drop it essentially back in that black powder era. But it's still a funny shtick when there's just too many guns. I mean, me personally, one of my favorite things about like pirates in general are the sea shanties. Uh, Cause I, I do really enjoy a nice sea shanty. And so I'm trying to gear Timothy a little towards that with one of the spells I've acquired. Uh, so that way I can possibly do some uh, sea shanties for the podcast. <laughs> I also want to get Timothy a tricorn hat, uh, just to really ex- like, just really make him pure raw sexual energy. Uh, <laughs> uh j- just like really lean in on that because he he would be like that kind of pirate, just pure pure <laughs> sex energy pirate. <laughs> I bet Juan would make would make Timothy very uncomfortable and unsure of what to do. He was really good at that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Timothy would Especially love if that. we took the muzzle off. <laughs> yes, please. Hello? <laughs> okay, now I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> One Jack had a lunch, and it you wasn't for back. sexy reasons. He's still alive. True. We're good to see. Think, As uh, always. <laughs> I think my favorite pirate tropes i i like legends of the sea and stuff like that like i like legends of named ships so the chromatic queen yeah. is like fit that bill perfectly for me but along with that i love i like the lassophobia make me terrified of what lurks in the deep waters i'm excited for when we get to fight a kraken or the leviathan I'm excited to fight a Kraken. <laughs> ancient sea monster of myth just to be like, yeah, we're pirates. Let's kill this thing. <laughs> I'm excited to fight it too for a completely different reason. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've stated this enough. Timothy's a horn dog. <laughs> like, <laughs> he hasn't nothing's been good that bad happening yet, with though. a Kraken. No, it's getting there. Trust me. I've kept a lot of comments to myself. I'm like, nope, I've been given permission. I forgot. We have the explicit tag. I can be bad. It's hard to be <laughs> horny when three spirits are arguing in your head. That too. One of them's like a, a mom. <laughs> yes, and we know moms are... <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, favorite parent tropes from no, your side? I just mean like... <laughs> a Christian mom. You know what I mean? Like, the ones that are like... Deep South Bakery mom. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh gosh. Can't say that here. (laughs) Those are the ones that are the most horny. That's true, actually. Probably. They're real freaks. (laughs) But not in public. But just not in public, yeah. Yeah, obviously. (laughs) And that's the difference between her What about you, Rachel? Any uh, favorite pirate tropes? No, I'm. The main thought in my head is I'm just really excited. Like I feel like we were in a pirate town. We've done a couple water encounters, but like we're just actually getting into the pirate part now. So reserve judgment until the pirate part happens. It's fair. Right on. It's fair. Well, any final thoughts, anybody? I feel like. Uh... We've probably talked at people for long enough here on this most recent thrilling installment of Mutiny, um, where Yar. we've gone over a little bit of this and a little bit of that, from changing class to characters in development through APs. Um, to just shooting the shit about TTRPGs. True to... and real. Yeah. It's just hanging out. It's just been really just vibes. Hey, thanks for vibing with us, listener. You should also yeah. vibe with us over on Patreon. And maybe, I don't know, throw a few dollars over that way. We really appreciate They're the already there. That's true. But That's... no, I mean, it also releases to the main feed, too. Oh, it does. Just later. Yeah, later. That's what I mean. Selling yeah. it out to the others. Shill. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, All right. Oh, if you are well, a Patreon member, you can hear this early. Get your friends to subscribe too. <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be so cool! You get a high five from me whenever we get to have this podcast in person. 
Guaranteed <laughs> yeah, a free lunar high five on Pawn yeah, Encounter. Yeah, that's right. Th well, that's well, right now. Guaranteed high five from me if you get your buds to listen and also get them to be a Patreon member. Well, you just just have your just have your um your VTube avatar with a high five. I just, could do that, yeah, but just, like. A raw, crisp high five from the real deal? That'd be pretty cool. True. This is true. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for joining us for yet another mutiny. And remember, your party will never end if you don't let it. Mm. Have a good one. Bye. Ciao. Bye.